Hey folks, Nicholas Field here, and today I'm going to walk you through the main features that delineate a professional wireless system from a more prosumer or entry-level wireless system. This video is going to be focused on the needs of a production sound mixer or boom op, rather than someone working in a live sound or theatrical environment, although there is quite a bit of crossover between these two worlds, so this video might still be useful to you if that's where you're coming from. Let's go. Okay, so today I'm going to be comparing the Sennheiser G4 transmitter and receiver to the brand new Wizicom MTP60 transmitter and the MCR54 receiver. So looking at these two units side by side, you'll notice that they look pretty similar. Uh, but if you do a quick Google search, you'll see that the Sennheiser G4 transmitter costs around $500 USD, whereas the MTP60 transmitter is more than three times the price at $1,800. If you're new to the production sound world, you might be wondering, why is professional wireless so much more expensive? At this point, I feel like it's worth mentioning that up until very recently, all production sound equipment was expensive. With the launch of Sound Devices Mix Pre-Series and Zoom's F8, production sound's barrier to entry became seemingly a lot lower for aspiring sound mixers. While these specific products are a lot less expensive than their predecessors, the rest of the titans of industry have continued to churn out wireless products that are industry standard in pricing. While professional level equipment might seem quite expensive when you're starting out, in this industry you learn pretty quick that more often than not you get what you pay for. Specialized wireless systems such as those created by Wizicom, Electrosonics, Zaxcom, and Audio Limited are manufactured by rather small boutique companies. Most, though not all of their products, are squarely aimed at the contemporary production sound mixer who requires the very best in fidelity and durability with thoughtful features that save production time and money. These systems allow us to do our jobs effectively, and that's a valuable thing. Manufacturers such as Sennheiser produce a wireless product that's good enough for many applications, and their wide user base will attest to that. However, these mass-produced wireless packages have certain drawbacks that become pretty obvious when you start to integrate them into a proper production sound workflow. More on that later. For now, let's look at the actual build and physical characteristics of these two devices. One of the first things you'll notice when looking at the G-Series transmitter and receiver is that it has a hardwired antenna. This antenna is pre-cut to a certain length, and if it breaks in the field, it's not very easy to replace. Meanwhile, every professional grade wireless transmitter has a removable antenna that can be swapped to optimize transmission. The Sennheiser has a locking 3.5 millimeter connector, and over here, the Wizicom has a three pin Limo connector. This is the Sennheiser G4 receiver. It looks more or less the same as the transmitter, and when it comes time to use it in a bag, its display is unfortunately often hidden from view. Wireless receivers with a slot design, such as this Wizicom, are much easier to use in a bag or a rack because of the top mounted display. The Wizicom receiver is easily powered from a bag's battery distribution system, whereas to use a Sennheiser receiver in a bag, you have to use a dummy battery. And generally, each receiver requires its own cable from the BDS system, which becomes a bit challenging when you're running more than a few channels. Sennheiser G-Series receivers are quite popular as a wireless audio feed to camera because they're pretty small and if it gets broken by the camera operator, it's not that huge of a deal to replace. So this is the Sennheiser G4 EW500 series, which has a tuning range of 470 to 558 megahertz. Meanwhile, the Wizicom can tune between 470 and 1075 megahertz. Although in practical application, most of us can only tune to a portion of the spectrum legally. Because the Wizicom offers a much wider tuning range, it's more agile and dependable in a congested RF environment, such as a city. The Sennheiser G4 can automatically scan for clean frequencies. You have to scan and sync each receiver and transmitter individually. I made a video about this if you want to check it out. Meanwhile, the Wizicom MCR54 can scan and assign four channels of wireless simultaneously. Perhaps in the future, it will also be able to deploy these frequencies via Bluetooth. But for now, it's a relatively quick process via IR sync. The Wizicom has several other features that are not found in the Sennheiser system such as internal 32-bit timecode recording. This technology helps you to relax a bit on productions because you know that every single source is backed up on its lap pack. You can also control the Wizicom transmitter and receiver via the Wizicom BT app. It allows you to trigger recording, adjust gain, name takes, and more. Rather than just talk about why professional wireless sounds better than entry-level wireless, I figured I would A-B them in real time while I discuss the differences between the two. So on this channel I have the Sennheiser G4 with a COS 11D, and on this channel I have the Wizicom MTP60 with a DPA6060. Analog wireless systems transmit and receive frequencies using a process called companding. This literally means to compress on the transmission side and expand on the receiving side. Companding is a complex process and I won't pretend to know anything about it here. However, I will say that high quality companding is what makes transmission sound full and realistic as opposed to one that sounds brittle and robotic. It's also worth noting that digital systems don't use any companding. Another factor contributing to the superior sound quality of Pro Wireless is its amazing frequency response. The frequency response of the G4 system you're listening to right now is 80 to 18 kilohertz. The G4's total harmonic distortion is less than 0.09%. Meanwhile, the Wizicom system you're listening to right now has a frequency response of 45 hertz to 20 kilohertz. The Wizicom system is also produced to a higher spec with a total harmonic distortion of less than 0.03 and a typical THD of only 0.015. 
High-end wireless systems are far more robust in their communication, which is to say that they have powerful front-end filtering, which filters out unwanted interference in the transmission. Sennheiser Wireless is often plagued with RF hits, bursts of spurious noise that happen at random intervals. Professional wireless systems on a clean frequency are more or less immune to these RF hits. All right, if you made it this far, you now know the main differences between a professional wireless system and an entry-level wireless system. And perhaps you have a better understanding of why the professional wireless systems command the prices that they do. Thank you so much for watching, and if you want to add to this conversation, please do so in the comments below. Finally, if this video was useful to you, please like this video and subscribe to my channel for more content. It really goes a long way in supporting what I do. Peace.